What an orderly, responsive group. I'm stunned. I'm really stunned. Good morning, all. I'm uh, Paul Grogan, president of the Boston Foundation. So delighted to welcome all of you here for a very uh, important conversation about powering Greater Boston's economy, why the Latino community is critical to our shared uh, future. Uh, we at the Boston Foundation are delighted to be part of putting this program on. I think most of you are familiar with the foundation. Uh, it is a 102-year-old billion-dollar charity that over its life has put a billion and a half dollars uh, in the hands of uh, Boston, Greater Boston's nonprofit community. And that, bi the, uh, uh, in total, it's a billion and a half, but we're proud that a bi fully a billion of that billion and a half uh, has been given in the last 10 years. Um, so we've been investing in a better Boston uh, for over uh, 100 years. Um, and uh, our mission statement talks about using our philanthropic resources to help build a vital, prosperous community in which justice and opportunity is extended uh, to all. Um, we are delighted here uh, this morning to have the mayor join us. He rearranged his schedule uh, to do so, and he does have to uh, get on to other things. Uh, but we're so delighted he's here. Uh, no one is more committed to diversity, inclusion, and opportunity than Mayor Marty Walsh. Please welcome him now. Thank you, Paul. And um, I want to, uh, first of all, welcome everyone this morning, and thank you for being here today. Uh, I think I'm hearing the sun is coming out today, uh, so um, we'll see when that happens. But. Uh, this is, this is how the weather is in Ireland. Uh, anyone that has Irish descent, uh, it rains every day, and it rains sideways and upside down, and everywhere, just like the last few days, so my family's getting real used to this. Uh, but I wanna, I wanna thank Paul Grogan, I wanna thank the, the Boston Foundation uh, for this report. Uh, I wanna give a couple special shout outs. One is to Alana St. Guillen, she's the Director of Office of Immigrant and Advancement uh, for her work, and Alvaro Lima from the uh, researcher at the Boston Planning and Development Agency, both who are speaking to today uh, for their, their work as well on this report. Um, Paul said, as Paul mentioned, the city is a strong supporter of the Latino community, as is the, the, the Boston Foundation. And they, a lot of their support through the, the Latino Legacy Fund and other initiatives. Uh, so I want to thank, again, the Boston Foundation, everyone associated here with the Boston Foundation for, for your great work. Uh, I'd like to thank the Planning and Development Agency at the City of Boston uh, who worked on this report. And if you get a chance, if you go to the Boston Public Library and you go into the MAP Center, you're going to see a map, a history of maps and a history of immigration in the United States of America. And in that, it shows Boston, Massachusetts, um, in the 20th century, way ahead of the curve when it comes to other cities in, in the United States average as far as immigration. So it's something that, that we're proud of in the city of Boston. So when we talk about doing reports, uh, we don't run away from them, we run towards them. And it's something that it's important for us to understand that we're not going to shy away from, from, from our immigrant, immigrant past or our immigrant future. Um, this report is going to, this report basically will show us and help us understand the critical impact Latinos have on the Boston workforce and the Boston economy. As we know, this report shows the contributions of the Latino community are enormous. Uh, most of us knew that without seeing the report, but when you see the report, it jumps out of you. Um, we have a strong, diverse community, Latino community, within our city and across our city, uh, with all race and all incomes, all education levels, and so much more. So we're talking about a community that, that, that is really embedded in Boston, in the whole entire community of Boston. The diversity touches all aspects of city life, from our culture to our industries to our economy. I'm just going to tell you a couple of stats in the city of Boston. The Latinos also have a strong presence in the city hall in itself. More than 2,000 Latinos work for the city of Boston. That's about 12% of our workforce. Five of our department heads are led by Latinos, including, not including, plus the Chief of Health and Human Services in the city of Boston, Felix Arroyo. We have, and most of those departments are our largest departments in the city. We also have um, Latinos like Alejandro, who I mentioned earlier, who runs the Office of Immigrant Advancement, and so many other folks. Latinos have a strong voice and a strong run in City Hall. We're committed to creating a diversity, diverse work f workplace. We created the Office of, Office of Diversity. And we created that office, we built that office up to now that we have three staff there, and that office works with human resources throughout the entire city of Boston. 
We've been working on hosting career fairs, something that we did uh, over the Dudley building uh, a couple weeks ago where we had hundreds, 100, 100 plus employers and we had hundreds of people that came through to sign up for and What we're going to be doing with those, these are outside employers, what we're going to be doing is following up with the employers to see how many people they actually hired from the workshop that we did. And if they don't hire people, then we either invite them back to talk to them about hiring people or we don't invite them back. Because there's no point of having a workshop to have a table there with a banner there, get credit for being part of a job fair. At the end of the day, don't hire anybody. That doesn't help us. So our office is going to make sure that we continue to move forward on that. Our next career fair is June 29th in East Boston High School, and uh, sure, we're going to be it's, uh, sure we're going to have a strong Latino outreach. So we're going to ask people to drop that down. We also know that many of many of our business owners uh, in the in the city of Boston, Latino, uh, our small businesses are the lifeblood to our local economies. And we've been studying that, and we were able to take our office of small business business development and put it under economic development in the city of Boston, so we have a better opportunity of working with our businesses and starting businesses. Um, as many of you know, if you don't know, many of our, our entrepreneurs are immigrants in the city of Boston. So we have, when you think about what the impact that our small businesses have, I think the numbers are 40,000 small businesses in the city of Boston generating about $2 billion a year in the economy. So you think about the impact that those businesses have. I want to say 40 plus percent of them are, 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 are owned by immigrants. So you think about the impact that we have in our society. Um, let me just end with this, and I know that you're going to you, you hear more to talk about um, the report, but I was talking to a few people about this um, on our stance on immigration. When the president came out with his executive order ban, uh, banning immigrants who are going to be taking money away from cities of Boston who are sanctuary cities, um, you think about the impacts of that. They used that report as saying that crime is up in these neighborhoods that these immigrants are in. They're, they're causing all the crime. The Muslims are causing all the terrorists, terrorism. And when you start to look at what the president and what Sessions has said, and you compare that to reality in the city of Boston, it doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you a couple of things. Right now in Boston, we have $7 billion worth of development that's going on as we speak in, in most neighborhoods in the city of Boston. We're building housing, we're building companies, GE's coming. You look out the window, you see all kinds of things going on across the harbor there in, in East Boston. There's development there that hadn't been developed in there in, in 50 years. Now there's development going on. So there's been investments made in our city. The investment isn't all Massachusetts money or Boston-based money. This investment's coming from around the, around the country and around the world. So if immigration was bad for a city, then certainly Boston would be a list that you would want to come to. When you look at public safety in the city of Boston, and you look at what's been happening in the city of Boston, if you look at most numbers, I'm not going to get into all the numbers, but if you look at most numbers over the last three or four years, we've had a decrease across the board in crime. The number that jumps out, though, the best is that, not including this year, we've had a 25% reduction in arrests in the city of Boston. Now, if immigration was that bad, our numbers on crime wouldn't be going down, and certainly our number on arrests wouldn't be going down. They'd be going up. And when you look at the demographic breakdown of the city of Boston, we're about 680,000 people unofficially. 28% of those residents, these residents live in the city of Boston, were born in another country. And if you look at the map, a very diverse group of countries. And if you look at that, if you continue to look at the numbers, 48% of the people that live in Boston, Massachusetts are first generation like me. So you have over 75% of the people that live in the city of Boston are either from another country or one plane ride or boat ride away from being in another country. And you think of all the things that we have going for us in our community. So it's important that a report like this not just gets circulated, but gets talked about. So that we as a city can take the, the pieces of this report and make improvements that we need to make improvements on, which we will. Because if you look at the 12% that I mentioned working in City Hall, that doesn't match up with the number of population in Boston. We know that, but we're working on that. So there, there are some places that we can learn and work on. But there's also a good story to tell in this.
So I just want to thank all of you who had something to do with putting this report together. Those of you that are from business here, I think it's important for you. The one thing I will say, I need help. We need help. Because when we talk about hiring people, you can't just constantly think, or people can't just constantly say, well, it's a city or the state. It needs to be private industry as well. We need to have the private industry step up to the table here to continue to, to, to help spread our diversity and give people opportunities. Thank you very much. And if everyone will put this report together, thank you for your great work. And the reason why I'm running, many of you know a woman named Vanessa Calderon. And I am going to a coffee hour with her. And if I'm late for her, it's over. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mayor. And I do, I do want to point out that uh, the report that we're releasing today c uh, could not have been done without the extraordinary cooperation uh, of the uh, Office of Immigrant Advancement and the Boston Planning and Development uh, Agency. And Alvaro Lima will be up here uh, uh, shortly. Uh, but they've just been marvelous to work with. And uh, I want to thank the mayor for making the administration so welcoming of the kind of private involvement that the Boston Foundation and others uh, uh, represent. Yeah, you make it easy to do good work, and we, uh, we appreciate it. Um, after the mayor's comments about immigration, I can't resist uh, pointing out that the Boston Foundation was founded during the period of uh, the widest open immigration uh, in our history between 1880 and 1920. We were founded in 1916. And the early community foundations, which we were one, would not have been formed were it not uh, for the torrents of immigrants pouring into the country at that time. And many uh, of the early community foundations, including the Boston Foundation, defined much of their mission as helping the newly arrived move into the mainstream of American life. So we are unabashedly pro-immigrant, uh, and we have been so for over uh, 100 years. Um, we'll hear, uh, my mission is, is not to present the report. That will happen uh, momentarily. But I can't re resist pointing out one statistic of the many astounding things that one learns uh, by reading the report. Um, Latino population growth accounts for nearly all of Boston's population growth since 1980. All. So you can really make the argument, no Latinos, no Boston Renaissance, because that growth in population has been absolutely indispensable to the kind of vitality uh, that the city uh, exhibits uh, today. So this community has had more impact uh, than most, uh, most people know. Um, but we obviously want to be thinking about the future and, uh, and the present as well. Uh, we are living at a time of an extraordinarily tight labor market. The opportunities to move people to work who have been out, uh, outside or uh, on the margins is, uh, is just extraordinary. And as I've been saying, uh, uh, an unemployment rate this low is, is a terrible uh, thing uh, to waste. And we are taking advantage of it already, but we need to do uh, more. But as an example, one of our key education initiatives, Success Boston, aims to help Boston public school graduates graduate from college. And years ago, we put out a report that showed that the completion rate was rather dismal. But now, uh, it, we are doing very well. Dramatic increases have occurred in the graduation rates. And more than one third of the students who benefited from that program uh, are uh, Latino. Uh, on the workforce front, we're also very proud to be a founding member of SkillWorks, a $30 million funder collaborative between the Boston Foundation, the City of Boston, and a number of local and national uh, foundations that supports pathways to family sustaining jobs for lower income workers. And Latinos here again make up about 30% uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the people that the SkillWorks program uh, is serving. Another way we've tried to act on the growing role Latinos play in Boston is by f helping to form the Latino Legacy Fund in collaboration with several key Latino philanthropists and leaders, many of whom are here today and played an, a critical role in organizing today's program. And I'd like to thank the Latino Legacy Fund Advisory Committee uh, for their leadership in helping us convene this important uh, conversation. And I'd now like to invite Aixa Beauchamp, the co-chair of the committee, uh, to share a few thoughts. Aixa. Thank you, Paul. 
Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome those people who are sitting in the back to please come up and join us up here. There's some chairs up here. Please don't be shy and join us. So my name is Aixa Beauchamp, and along with Juan Carlos Morales, um, right there. Juan Carlos, can you stand? We are the uh, co-founders and the co-chairs of the Latino Legacy Fund. The Latino Legacy Fund originated as a unique partnership amongst local Latino philanthropists and leaders, as Paul had indicated, the Boston Foundation, and Hispanics in Philanthropy. And through that partnership, we created the first ever Latino Fund for Greater Boston. Our partnership with the Boston Foundation has been critical to the success of the Latino Legacy Fund. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Paul and thank his dynamic team, which include Kate Gedge, Dan Sherman, and Liz Walzak, who are here. Can you just wave? And I'd also like to take the opportunity to introduce my Latino Legacy Fund committee members and founders of the Latino Legacy Fund, who are not only inspirational leaders, but are an important part of the fabric of our community. Um, so first off, I'm you, uh, incoming Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Rosalind Acosta. Next up, Carolina Vallenera. <laughs> Zamawa Arenas. <laughs> Nietzsche Spring. <laughs> Laz Lopez. <laughs> Oz Mondeja, who's out there in the back hiding. <laughs> Renee Morquette. And Renee Hawking. And of course, again, to Juan Carlos for being an uh, inspiration and my partner in this work. The Latino Legacy Fund's mission is to create and maintain a permanent endowment to strengthen the diverse Latino community of Greater Boston and contribute to the region's civic vitality by supporting issues and organizations that advance the socioeconomic status of Latinos and enhance the leadership capacity of the Latino community. When we started this, we set a goal of establishing a million dollar fund, half of which we would grant to local nonprofits. I'm pleased to report that we're just $50,000 shy of our goal, and I welcome all and any contributions to close that gap today. <laughs> But the fund has also provided approximately $250,000 to over 15 organizations in the last three years. And we are very proud to have supported some of the most important organizations and Latino leaders in the greater Boston area. But we would not be accomplishing our mission if we didn't also address the Latino community's critical role in, in Boston's civic vitality, and in particular, our contributions to our local economy. Today, we will dive into research and data and statistics and initiatives that are demonstrating how Latinos are helping to power, to power Greater Boston's economic engine and the essential part Latinos play in the shared future prosperity of the region's success. The Latino Legacy Fund is honored to be, to be a partner with the Boston Foundation and to support and convening. And I, for one, am here to listen, to learn, and to be part of this morning's call to action. So I invite you to join me through your organizations, by partnering with others around you, and by joining us, of course, in supporting the Latino Legacy Fund, and or by taking other steps that are outlined throughout this dynamic discussion. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to Paul, and I'm eager to get started. Thank you, Ike. And I again want to thank the members of the advisor group. You have no idea of the endless hours that this group has uh, put in on their own time uh, to make all of this happen, and uh, we're deeply uh, appreciative.